Today we're going to take a look at the Singer Genie. Now uh, apologies for the state of this machine, I really have just uh, put it on the bench. I picked it up from a local recycle centre here and um, this is how it came. So yep, it's uh, showing at warts and all at the moment. Dirt, uh, grime, the scuffs here and there, you know. It's been, unfortunately it's just been dumped and sort of uh, potentially mistreated, you know, thrown around at the recycle centre, I don't know. Um, or it might have been like that uh, when it was given to the recycle centre, I don't know. But um, I'll give it a quick clean. I know uh, that, you know, some of this grime and gunk and whatnot can be uh, a bit hard to take on a, a video of a nice machine like this. So I'll come right back once I've given it a quick clean. That's just a cursory clean. I really just wanted to get the grime and bits off it. You can see that. <laughs> it was fairly dirty. And uh, there's still a couple of scuffs on there. I haven't given it a deep clean. I've just given it a quick wipe over. And I just use a standard cleaning product. This particular one is EcoStore multi-purpose cleaner. It's a, you know, very um, mild cleaner. Uh, you do want to be careful when you're spraying this around metal parts and whatnot. You know, you probably wouldn't want to, you know, spray it directly on these metal parts like these hinges here uh, because it might uh, cause them to corrode a little bit. But I would just, I just spray on the plastics and then wipe with a rag. And you're fairly safe to wipe over the metal parts with a rag as long as it's not absolutely saturated. It should be fine. So this, as I said before, is the Singer Genie, uh, otherwise known in the in Europe as the Singer Starlet, and uh, the Genie is the name for the US version. So we must have got the US version here in New Zealand. I've uh, seen a few of these around. I've got another one uh, somewhere. I think it's in better condition than this one. We'll see a little bit later uh, what condition this is in. It's not too bad, but it's a couple of wee things I've noticed already. And this model is the 354. I'll go through the differences uh, between the 354 and the 353 uh, model a little bit later. And um, this, this machine was made in France. And uh, hello to all my French viewers. Here is one of my favourite French people, uh, Mr. Jean-Michel Jarre. I love his music. Great Frenchman. And um, yeah, so... Uh, made in France in 1974, I would say, this model, but they made them between 73 and 74. And they're quite a neat little machine, they're very compact, although they're not exactly lightweight. They're fairly grunty machines, uh, fairly hefty. I think I saw a mention of them a bit being about 22 pounds, uh, so you know, that's that'll be about, I don't know, 10 kg, 11 kg, or something like that. Yeah, fairly hefty, and um, but the nice thing about these is they're all sort of self-contained. So the machine itself is, uh, you know, it's a plastic-covered machine. This is not a cover. This is actually the machine itself here. This is a little cover here that slides off, a little compartment there, and you know you can see there you've got the built-in uh, carry handle there. I've seen it mentioned on the internet that this was considered a replacement, almost in quotes, a replacement for the 221K featherweight uh, machine because of, you know, the way it's self-contained and um, portable. If we have a look at the top of the machine, you can see you've got a little uh, spool pin there and bobbin winder here, bobbin winder tensioner and then come around the other side this is part of the cover slide out cover here now uh, i've noticed that a couple of wee things here if we have a close look here you can see a little bit of damage i'm not sure if that'll come through you can see a little bit of damage here and they are telltale screwdriver gouging marks so someone's tried to open the cover not knowing how it works and got in there with a screwdriver and tried to twist this open uh, so that's, it's had a bit of a uh, hard life the old case here so the, it's you know pretty simple to get into 
there's a fairly obvious button on the top here. Uh, but, you know, if you didn't know how to, and the manual's stored away in here, you might not necessarily know how to get into it. And uh, out comes the old screwdriver, and give it a good wrench. It'll come out eventually, I guess, but uh, not exactly an ideal situation. But anyway, the way this works is the you press the little button on the top there, and this front uh, top section here flips down. Yeah, it's, it's been a little bit damaged, so it's a bit tight. That flips down, revealing a beautiful 70s uh, design there, floral design. And I thought I'd match it up with a, uh, you know, a matching piece of fabric there, just for, <laughs> for laughs. Pretty retro, pretty 70s, eh? What you do there, you just flip this out here, and then that allows you to slide the whole cover off revealing the actual machine there. Again, I haven't cleaned inside here. I'll just give it a quick wipe there. It's pretty grubby. I'll give it a really good clean later on. Nice thing about the cover here is that it uh, not only protects the machine, but underneath here is a little stowage for the foot controller. Just pull that off there and there's the foot control stowed away nice and neatly there so that you know you don't have to put it into here and scratch things up and potentially damage things there quite a nice touch pull that out and clip that back on you might be able to see that the machine's yellowed a fair bit. Uh, the case has. Well, yeah, the machine has as well, actually. And you can see the original colour here. It's sort of like a um, a creamy colour. Clotted cream, I suppose you could call it. I don't know. Um, but you can see that the sun has had an effect on the uh, plastics here. So that's yellowed up slightly. That can be reversed with a process called retrobrighting. It's used a lot in the vintage computer community, but um, I don't bother with it. it. I kind of don't mind it discolored. It's, you know, and the jury is still out on uh, the effects of retrobrighting as well long term. It uh, certainly brings the color back to its original, but um, yeah, it's still not known really whether it's going to affect the uh, plastics in a long term. The retro writing process. Oh, I'll set that aside. Just a quick note there. There's a little threading, handy little threading diagram on the inside of the cover there. So yeah, pretty neat. I think yeah, it's definitely a broken piece here. This should be a little latch, a little latch piece that sticks out here. That's been broken off when someone's tried to get into the case, I guess. Yeah. Uh, funnily enough, just speaking about um, the French people. I had a little bit of an anomaly actually happen uh, regarding my uh, YouTube viewers and you know generally 30% of my uh, audience is from the USA and the rest is just made up by all sorts of uh, other countries you know France, Great Britain, Australia, um, all sorts of all, oh yeah lots of Spain, lots of other uh, countries, South America and all sorts uh, but I had an anomaly around about May 2020, so it would have been right in the middle of the lockdown uh, for COVID, and I had a really big spike in French viewers, and they uh, just momentarily, I'll show you the graph, just momentarily the uh, French overtook the Americans in viewership for the channel, which, uh, you know, surprised me. It was just a quick blip. Um, but maybe it was something to do with the content I was making at the time, and that was the Singer 720 series machines I think I was doing back then. So yeah, just an interesting um, thing I noticed, but uh, went down pretty quickly, and uh, we're, we're back to status quo at the moment, so the uh, Americans are winning that fight at the moment. Yeah, so this is the manual here. Singer Genie 354 on the top corner here with new elastic stretch stitch and I did mention earlier that the difference between the 354 and the 353 is this elastic stretch stitch and if we have a look here uh, this is the yeah 354 
it has one extra stitch and that's the elastic stretch stitch it's talking about there and that's this one in blue here that little blue stitch there that's the stretch stitch there uh, so that's the only difference between the 353 and the 354 models yeah if we have a look there's a little slot there that that case the broken case um, piece should go into there so there's a little piece of protrusion here that's the front and the back one's broken off here that should go into this little slot here so yeah a bit of a shame it's a little bit damaged i guess when people throw them out they well, they're just disposing of them really aren't they so they don't treat them very well yeah everything i think it's it's probably all going to be working condition i'd say by the look of it everything seems to be there what i might do before i go too far with this is i'll give it a good test and make sure it is actually working just a quick um, test on you know basic operation there just to make sure that it's actually sewing we'll just make sure that the motor's in good condition there and that you know things like the bobbin winder are working we've got power there power light yeah it's a bit slow that's flat out i'll just raise that press foot there yeah needs a good uh, service so i'll go through and do that so that looks all right a bobbin winder bobbin winder is a bit slow but that might just need lubricating it seems to, it's it's trying to work i can't see any major issue there the selectors they all seem to be working there i'll just go to zigzag i think i'll end up doing a series on this machine here so i'll go through all the basic you know things like uh, bobbin winding needle installation and threading and things like that in a later video but at this stage i'm just doing a quick uh, assessment on the machine yeah just keep an eye out for other videos relating to things like maybe servicing and whatnot general use some basics videos Give it a quick thread here. Let's just see if everything's in order as far as sewing goes. Yeah, sounds fairly typical for a um, machine that hasn't been serviced for a long time. It's it's stitching. You know, tension probably needs a bit of. A, attention there yeah but that looks promising we'll go through some of the uh, controls here just quickly so we've got an on off switch just down here it's not just a light switch that actually isolates the motor and the bulb there so it turns the bulb and the motor on the tensioner here is a little bit different to you know a lot of machines of the older era uh, Singer introduced this and it's very similar to the uh, some of the 700 series machines that I see has this little tensioner here and there's no dial on here for adjusting tension it's all done through this wheel here so that's your tensioner there and the little you can see a little number through the front cut out there so you know normally around three or, or four I guess is probably about right you've got your uh, zigzag width here so you've got straight stitch over on the left there and then uh, right over to zigzag full width zigzag on the right you notice a little blue icon here just a little blue label that's the for the bars for the button holding i'll go through that in another video and you set for button holding i think you set your um, needle position to the left although i haven't had a look through the manual and also blue here it looks like they're suggesting that you set it to blue that's what it looks like to me but i haven't as i say, i haven't read the manual and then you know you'd set your stitch length down quite quite low here so i think that's being indicated by these little these two little bars here so that's your stitch length here that's your needle positioning so your center left and right needle position and then you've got a stitch selector here just for the different stitches there stitch length as I said before and then you've got your reversing for back tacking there reverse stitch and as I said uh, 
earlier we've got this little retractable spool pin here and a standard fairly standard sort of bobbin winder mechanism here where you sit your bobbin over here and engage like so there's also a stop motion clutch on the hand wheel here it's indicated by a little bobbin here looks like a little button and you just push on that area here and that sort of rocks this disc here like that and that should disengage the machine yeah so that what that does is just allows the um, the motor to run and it drives the hand wheel and which in turn drives the bobbin winder so you can use that for bobbin winding it isolates the driving of the machine basically just allows bobbin winding and then um, and that way you can leave your machine threaded and uh, wind a bobbin without uh, getting everything tangled up down here and you know to uh, re-engage you just reverse that rocker there and we're back into driving the whole machine there yeah, she certainly needs attention. Um, so I'll go through and do a service on this machine. Oh, just a uh, quick look at the manual here anyway. So the portable zigzag sewing machine by Singer. Congratulations, uh, you're about to discover a wonderful world of sewing pleasure with your genie sewing machine. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, 1974. As you go through this book, you will discover how these and many other features enable you to sew beautifully and easily. Enjoy sewing. Printed in France. Yep. Oh, pretty good. A little index there. Getting started. Your basic. You know all your basics, really. Choosing needle and thread. Oh, I'll just flip through. Tensions, sewing a seam, zigzagging, accessories. Ah, oh, that's what I don't have, do I? Not sure if they came with any accessories at all. Yeah, special purpose foot. Let's have a look here. Changing. So it looks like maybe did it come with a special purpose foot and a zip foot? Uh, doesn't. Oh, and a blind hem guide. Raising the plate. Oh, so that's like a drop feed. So this is like a uh, drop feed type scenario where you, instead of dropping the feed, you raise the plate. Yeah, so I don't think I got any attachments with the machine. I might have them with my other one. I'll check that out. Changing the plate. Sewing the professional way. Uh, buttonholes, we'll go through that later. Darning. Elastic stretch stitch multi stitch zigzag. Yeah, so pretty comprehensive little manual. It goes through changing the light bulb, caring for your machine, clean, shows you where to clean the machine, removing and replacing the face plate, uh, the bobbin case, replacing the slide plate, replacing the end cover, and that's it. Fashion aid, so accessories with their part numbers here, and a an index there. Pretty neat with a nice little uh, cover that sort of matches the fascia of the machine there. So um, yeah, that, that's pretty much it for today. Just a quick look at the Singer 354 Genie or Starlet. It was really just to assess the machine quickly and see whether it's worth going ahead and fully servicing the machine. I'll go ahead and do a servicing video, keep an eye out for that. Also uh, keep an eye out for basics, some basics videos on the machine as well. Yep, quite nice, quite like it, it's a cute little machine. It's colourful and bright, uh, yep, I like it. Yeah, so um, thanks uh, everyone for watching and thank you especially to my patrons on Patreon who help uh, support the channel you might notice a little bit more of an improvement in sound quality I've uh, purchased a new lapel microphone wireless microphone and also a new camera so you'll probably notice a little bit uh, hopefully a bit better video and audio quality and that's what the uh, patreon uh, helps to pay for so thank you very much for that keep an eye out for more videos and thanks very much for watching